This space tour is proudly sponsored by CuriosityStream. Get access to my streaming video service, Nebula, when you sign up for CuriosityStream using the link in the description. Hello and welcome to Up and Atom Tours. My name's Jade and I'll be your personal tour guide for today. So you've booked in for the VIP private tour of the multiverse, is that right? Great, that's our most popular tour. So take a seat, get comfortable. Before we take off, I'll just remind you of today's itinerary. So to, um, in today's tour, we'll be traveling through the four layers of the multiverse as proposed by world-renowned physicist Max Tegmark in his book, Our Mathematical Universe. They go from smallest to largest and also least controversial to most controversial. These are by no means the only proposed theories about the state of our universe, but today's tour will be focusing explicitly on them. So are you all settled in? Great, don't forget to fasten your seatbelts, and with that, I think we're ready for takeoff. Three, two, one. How was that takeoff for you? Some of our first time customers get a little bit startled, but you seem to have handled it really well. Um, before we arrive at our first destination, can I get you a beverage or anything? A beer? Of course. There you go. Oh, and look, we've just arrived at our first destination. The Level 1 Multiverse, regions beyond our cosmic horizon. This kind of multiverse is based on three facts that we have pretty good reason to believe. One, light and information travels at a finite speed. Two, the universe as we know it had a beginning, the Big Bang. And three, space goes on infinitely far in all directions. Putting these three facts together means that light from very far away, or any kind of information for that matter, takes time to get to us. Now since there's only been a limited amount of time for light to travel since the Big Bang, then that means around us is a sphere that represents the entirety of space that we could have interacted with since the Big Bang. However, since we have good reason to think that space extends infinitely far, there are presumably stars, galaxies, planets, and other stuff beyond this sphere. But by virtue of being beyond this sphere of influence, there's no way for us to contact or gain any information about that region of space. It's causally disconnected. We can never interact with it or access it. This bubble is called the particle horizon. Now, if space goes on forever, then that means that there are more particle horizons, spheres which are causally disconnected from the rest of the universe. In fact, if space is infinite, then there are an infinite amount of particle horizons. Not only that, but since there's only a finite way to arrange a given set of atoms, physicists have calculated that an identical U exists about 10 to the 10 to the 29 meters away. On top of that, because the universe is infinite, there would exist infinitely many copies of you on average every 10 to the 10 to the 29 meters away. Yeah, things get a bit weird when we start talking about infinity. This multiverse is currently the leading theory of cosmology today, assuming only three facts we're pretty sure of. That space is infinite, that light has a finite speed, and that the universe had a beginning. So do you have any questions so far? No? Great, let's move on to our next destination then. The Level 2 Multiverse, Universes with Different Physics. As far as we can tell, the story that the Big Bang model tells us about the state of our universe works incredibly well. It matches experimental data to amazing precision. An aspect of the Big Bang theory is something called inflation. What inflation describes is a moment just after the Big Bang, where the universe expanded incredibly fast. It increased the size of the universe by a factor of 10 to the power of 26 in less than 10 to the power of negative 32 seconds. For context, in the following 13.8 billion years since then, it's increased by about the same amount. Before the moment where inflation began, the universe was so hot and dense that the constants of nature, the mass of the electron, the strength of gravity, and even the number of spatial dimensions were malleable and subject to change. Even though this expansion lasted only a fraction of a second, it had the effect of freezing the values of the constants of nature in place to those we measure today. But the thing is, they could have been different. 
In fact, a certain branch of inflationary theory called chaotic inflation, which partially takes into account quantum fluctuations, posits that inflation is still going on today in other regions of space infinitely far away. Imagine the universe as a loaf of rising bread. As the bread expands, little gas pockets form where the expansion seems to stop or at least go on much slower, but the rest of the loaf is still expanding. It's hypothesized that each of these gas bubbles is a level 1 multiverse, just like ours. Except, due to slightly different quantum fluctuations, the physical constants are frozen at different values in each multiverse. In other words, each gas pocket is an infinite level 1 multiverse with different physics. This makes up a level 2 multiverse. You might now be seeing the meaning of the word levels. Each higher level multiverse contains the previous one. There are an infinite number of um, level 1 multiverses contained within the level 2 multiverse. This will become even clearer as we approach our next destination. Though the previous two multiverse levels had roots in cosmology, the study of the very big, the level 3 multiverse has roots in quantum mechanics, the study of the very small. It has to do with a particular interpretation of quantum mechanics called the many worlds interpretation, first proposed by Hugh Everett in 1957. Oh, and with that, we're entering the level three multiverse. We're experiencing a little bit of turbulence, um, but don't worry, that's totally normal as we transition between multiverse levels. In quantum theory, the state of the universe is not given in classical terms such as the positions and velocities of all particles, but by a mathematical object called a wave function. Superposition is the idea that a system described by a quantum wave function can be in more than one state at the same time. Think Schrodinger's cat being both alive and dead. Hugh Everett was really concerned about what happens when we measure this wave function. Some conventional interpretations of quantum mechanics tell us that the wave function simply collapses probabilistically into one of the allowed outcomes. That is, when you open the box, given some probability, either the cat is alive or it's dead. But Everett thought, no, 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 there is no collapse. Instead, you have to take the superposition seriously and consider yourself as a quantum object. Whatever it meant by this is that all of the different states of the wave function, cat alive and cat dead, are real before and after the measurement. That by measuring this superposition, we interact with it and become part of the wave function of the system. That means after the measurement, the total wave function is now cat alive and I saw it alive, and cat dead and I saw it dead. All of these outcomes exist, it's just that we only perceive one of them. But where did the other states go? Well, Everett's answer is that all of the states exist in separated branched universes. You might have landed in the state where the cat is alive and you see it alive. But there's also another, almost identical universe, where another you landed in the state where the cat is dead and you saw it dead. So every time a quantum superposition is measured, the universe splits into identical copies, where the only difference is the outcome of the measured superposition. Although more debated and controversial than the level 1 and level 2 multiverses, the level 3 multiverse actually adds no new types of universes. Whereas level 1 parallel universes were far away in space, those of level 3 are right here, with quantum events causing classical reality to split and diverge into parallel storylines. And now, it's time to move on to our final destination. You might need another drink for this one. There you go. We're now heading to the level four multiverse, and this is the most controversial one we've talked about so far. It's the idea that there may be other universes out there with different mathematics. This is a lot to wrap your head around, but luckily for us, we have quite a bit of time before we reach the next destination. First, we need to get familiar with the idea that our universe may be nothing more than a mathematical structure. Again, a controversial idea. So to understand this, it'd be pretty useful to know exactly what a mathematical structure is. So let's draw an analogy with chess. You're probably most familiar with this representation of chess, a chessboard and pieces. But chess can be represented in many different ways. When newspapers print chess games, they use algorithmic chess notation. 
And when computers play chess, even though it appears as a 2D board, that information is expressed in lines of code. Yet all of these are still chess. Even though there are multiple representations, they all describe the same game. So there's a sense in which the representations themselves don't matter. As Tegmark says in his book, it's the relations between the entities that make up the game, rather than the actual entities themselves. Now, let's take a look at this cube. We're used to seeing this geometric representation, but this set of numbers also describes the exact same object, just in a different representation. Both of these representations describe the exact same object, but there is only one object they both describe. That is the mathematical structure. The immortal thing itself, stripped away of any baggage. There are a lot of mathematical structures, ranging from very simple to very complex. Now for the totally radical idea. Our physical universe may be, at the most fundamental level, nothing more than a mathematical structure. It's no secret that math is exceptional at describing our universe, but a very deep question is, why? Stephen Hawking once famously asked, what is it that breathes fire into the equations and makes a universe for them to describe? I would be very interested to know your thoughts about this if you'd be so kind as to share them in the comments, but Tegmark proposes that at the very deepest, most fundamental level of reality, there is only mathematics, obeying the rules of the infamous theory of everything, which we have not yet found. Now, if this is the case, and we do live in a mathematical structure that abides by the equations of the theory of everything, a very important question remains. Why these equations and not others? There are many other mathematical structures besides the theory of everything. So why should that be the one the universe is made of? Well, here Tegmark proposes that all mathematical structures exist as their own universes. Oh, and look, we're coming up to the level 4 multiverse right now. This is the biggest multiverse level we've talked about so far, with all of the previous levels contained within just our mathematical structure. Let's take a moment to soak in the beautiful view. As we head back to Earth, let's reminisce about the fantastic adventures we had today. Our first destination was the Level 1 multiverse, where we found that there may be parallel universes just like ours, which are contained within our universe but beyond our reach. There may even be another you, or an infinite number of other yous. Next, we travelled to the Level 2 multiverse, which may contain an infinite number of Level 1 multiverses with different physics. Then we journeyed to the level 3 multiverse, the many worlds of quantum physics. We discovered that every time a wave function collapses, a new parallel universe may be born where that story is lived out. And finally, the biggest multiverse of all, level 4, where if we can believe that our universe may be nothing more than a mathematical structure, this implies the existence of other universes with different mathematics. If you were particularly enamoured by the Level 3 multiverse, the many worlds of quantum physics, please allow me to recommend a documentary by today's sponsor, CuriosityStream. It's an in-depth exploration of the many worlds interpretation, which features high-profile physicists explaining the foundational aspects of quantum physics and the insight behind how Hugh Everett came up with the theory. If that isn't enough for you, CuriosityStream has many other science documentaries, like exploring quantum history with Brian Greene, Stephen Hawking's favourite places and gravitational waves. Their selection isn't limited to science, of course, with literally thousands of fantastic quality shows spanning history, society, technology and nature. Starting at only $3 a month or $20 a year, it's great value for money. CuriosityStream loves independent creators like me, CGP Grey, Braincraft, Minute Physics, 12 Tone, Knowing Better and Real Engineering, and wants to help us grow our own streaming platform, Nebula. We're building Nebula because we want a place for educational creators to try out new content ideas that might not work on YouTube, like VIP tours of different universes. 
Normally, Nebula is $3 a month, but we've partnered with our friends at CuriosityStream to get you free access to Nebula with a CuriosityStream subscription. They're offering Up and Atom viewers free access to Nebula when you sign up at curiositystream.com slash up and atom. You can find the link in the description of this video. And that concludes our tour for today. Thank you for flying with Up and Adam Tours. I hope you had a wonderful time. If you'd be so kind as to leave a review in the comments section, that would be wonderful. We love hearing from you and are always open to improvements and suggestions. And with that, we can put our feet up and enjoy the journey back to Earth.